Hi, this is, uh, I am Jane Walton. Uh, I am the owner of the Decorative Collective and the Hall Vintage website. Um, this is a little impromptu kind of live uh, from Summer's Place in Billingshurst, which is um, an auction house. And they are, um, they hold three times a year, I think it is, in normal times, uh, garden sales. And as anyone who knows me will know garden ornament is uh, my first love and as I'm getting back into dealing um, I thought I would come along and show you a little bit of what's in the next sale which is next week I believe um, if you google summer's place auctions Billingshurst then you will find the website and you'll find their catalogue so this morning has been uh, a really nice day actually the weather's been pretty good I've been to Kempton so up at half past three uh, went to Kempton uh, bought three little lambs uh, and a couple of really good lamps and I think one of them might turn out to be a particularly good lamp um, and then I went on to London uh, Hammersmith and visited for the first time Crowders um, H Crowders Crowders are um, one of the if not the oldest uh, lead ornament company in the UK. Um, they started in the 19th century. Uh, they are a family business and they are still going. And I don't doubt, as I was just explaining to, to James Rylands and Rupert, I think they will be going for another hundred years, no problem. I actually bought a beautiful, uh, what we believe is an American lead figure uh, from them, which is why I went up there to collect it. Um, it's a gorgeous piece um, and even they aren't quite sure who the maker is. So between us, we're going to try and figure out who the maker is. Um, Crowders make new lead ornament, um, but they also do restorations for uh, very big country houses. And they actually made the gates um, or involved in some of the Buckingham Palace uh, works, I believe, in the Victorian times. Uh, and, and I shouldn't think there's a country house in, in the UK that doesn't have um, a Crowder's piece um, somewhere within its grounds or within its home. Great people, wonderful firm, and a really good old fashioned, but uh, you know, they still make the lead pieces. They still create them in the same way that they did in the Victorian times. They also, more importantly, they still finish them in exactly the same way and um, they do the jointing in the same way, which means as opposed to modern lead, um, the seams don't tend to go. Um, but anyway, then I've come on here to Billingshurst, as I was saying to Summers Place. Um, I've always liked Summers Place. It's run by James Rylands and Rupert, and Rupert will forgive me, I'm sure, because I can't remember his surname, but everyone in, in our industry knows who they are. Um, James is, is quite often on TV anyway. Um, two really nice gentlemen. Um, nothing is ever too much trouble. Um, they run a really good auction. They get some great pieces in. Um, so given that we are now officially absolutely in spring, I thought you might enjoy seeing a few of the pieces that are on offer here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to turn the camera around. It may be a bit jerky because I didn't bring my gimbal, but hopefully you will get to see some of the pieces. Um, and I'll try and also show the lot numbers. So if there's anything you like, then you can refer or email them and ask um, Letty and Kate in the office for any details, or you can go onto their website and you can see the details on the website. So let me turn it around and start showing you less of me and more of what I've come here to see. So how do I turn it around? Here we go. Okay, so as you can see, it is a beautiful summer's day here. Um, Kempton was pretty good weather this morning, apart from a little bit where it really did pour. Um, and fortunately, I was back at my car. So this piece I particularly like. It's a corner. It's a fountain piece. Um, I'm not sure who the maker is. I haven't looked around it yet, but obviously with a cornucopia in the mouth holding holding the cornucopia um, which I assume the 
I think, yeah, the water will come out. So in the middle of a pond um, or something larger, that would be a fantastic piece. Or to be honest, you could just have it in the house as statuary. Um, and one of the things I would say is, this is a great example of how placing something on a plinth makes a huge difference. So if that was on a floor, it wouldn't look anywhere near as impressive. But when you raise something up, it makes it look more substantial um, and more impressive. So there's a little tip there, especially with urns. I mean, in the background there, you can see there's a set of five, what look like calf stone urns. We'll go around and have a quick look at those in a moment. And again, if they were on the ground, they wouldn't look nearly as impressive. So tip for me is buy good pedestals when you find them. Um, I've just bought three very old stone ones at home um, to start displaying things off. So I'm just going to walk around. So as I say, please forgive the, the jerkiness. That's an interesting set of what would have been originally used as finials to go on a wall or um, either side of a gate. I mean, to have four is really nice. So if you have a gate that leads through to another gate in a large part of the garden, then that, that would look quite nice. And obviously they're pretty mossy, which is always important. Um, that's lot one, two, four. Uh, and obviously once it rains and that they'll get even more mossier. So there's a plinth there. And obviously this is what summer's place do. So they leave pedestals around the garden. So when they do get urns in a statuary, then they can display them better. So what have we got here? I mean, one of the things with this auction is that's a rather nice set actually of urns, which look like they're probably on, no, they're not actually on the original pedestals because you can tell by the sockles. The sockles are the things that the bowls, the things on top sit on, S-O-C-L-E. Um, but those pedestals, as you can see, although they actually they look pretty good, um, they're too small for the sockles. So that's a good giveaway as to how you can tell they're not original. So having a quick walk round here, these are nice. These are carved stone, I would say. Uh, lot five, two, three, a pair. Um, nice, unusual kind of shape, bit of amphora, but you see there's, a, there's an instance there where you've got something sitting on the ground, um, but it, they're also probably sitting on the ground because they're damn heavy. So when you buy this, you know, this kind of stuff and you think about putting it on pedestals, think also about how you're going to get it up there. Um, that's quite a nice little piece. But what I was saying earlier was, sorry, I'm jumping around. They they sell a, a really good range of items that won't necessarily cost a huge amount of money. So for anyone who's thinking of kind of buying one or two really nice pieces for their garden, um, you can come here and you can find some really good bargains. I mean, that, they are pretty elaborate, those urns. Um, and again, the pedestals, fantastic pedestals. I don't know if they are for sale separately. But again, those are out of proportion for the pedestals, but they're obviously just on there for display. They're cast iron, those zones. They're lot 47. Uh, so, nice bench. Obviously, always popular. Always. I mean, the garden dealers on the Decorative Collective and the Hall Vintage, um, this time of year, do really, really well. And benches are always requested and required and sell pretty easy because every garden needs a bench. This is a set of four urns. Now, don't they look impressive? They are carved stone and, and they're obviously Victorian. Uh, you can also tell because when you get this blackness on the urns, um, it, it's kind of indicative of the fact they've probably come from a part of the country that was quite industrial because that's where the black will often have come from. You know, the, the, the kind of the, everything that was being pumped out by the factories, the soot and everything that, that, you know, that goes into the air and that affects what's around it, as we all know. But they are a really grand set. 
of urns. I like those a lot. They are lot 22. And it looks like they are sitting on the sockles, which is important because for moving things around like that, it makes it a lot easier if you can lift the tops off and then you can obviously have the sockles separately. I mean, especially when they are actually quite substantially sized urns. Um, and they're really getting really nice and mossy. So good, good set and quite unusual to find a set of five. Well, that's quite a contemporary piece. Let's go and find some other stuff. Thank you for those that are joining, by the way. Hope I'm, um, hope I'm not boring everybody. Uh, what have we got? Okay, we're coming into more stuff now. And as you can see, a real selection. And when you come to these auction places, there's even stuff up there. I mean, look at that. That's a set of saddle stones, staddle stones, S-T-A-D-D-L-E. Some people call them saddle, but they're not. They're actually staddle stones. Um, and they are a good set of five or six by the look of it. And they were obviously originally, they were used to um, support grain stores so that the rats basically couldn't get in the grain stores. But they are great for lining a drive, lining a pathway. She obviously was pretty grand in her day. So very, very well weathered. I don't think she was a term. She probably had some other sort of base. Lovely base, beautiful stone base. What have we got here? It's a more modern piece. He's quite attractive. It's not a thorn. I thought he might be a thorn. I mean, it's not. A nice little cherub there. Although quite often cherubs like that, they tended to come in pairs. And a true pair is when you have opposites. So if you see something described as a pair, but they're both, for instance, in this case, like the arm, the arm's going the same way. Um, if they're not a pair, they're a near pair. Um, so a true pair is when actually you have something like that, two of something, and it's like on a dog. Um, dogs will have the tails going in the opposite directions from each other, and that denotes a, a true pair. These are quite nice. These are, these are, are they lead? They look like lead. Nice faces. And there's they're, they're bowls actually. So in fact, they would make really quite nice fountain pieces. Um, you see those, they are a true pair because the, they are obviously in the colorings the same. The little cherubs are obviously different. One of them's got two, one of them's got one, but they were clearly together. Um, but they were also, if you look at them, they, they are a true pair because they're the same colour, definitely together. I mean, the colouring is so similar on both that there's no question they were together. Um, and actually also the urns, or look like kind of sort of stylized cornucopias, they are on different shoulders. So they are a true pair, which actually matters when it comes to value um, because a pair, a true pair of something will always be worth more than say a single urn uh, or a near pair she's rather nice she's a classical figure um, you do see that that I think she's Venus you do see that quite a lot uh, in recon as well as stone rather grand probably French let me just bring that in I think I've got the zoom on sorry about that uh, yeah, I would say that is that is French. Obviously, it was probably a a fountain piece in a town. I would have thought, uh, due to the size and that sort of thing. And obviously, the trough was probably presumably for either animals to drink out of or for people to. There was probably where that hole is. There was probably a a fountain spout, either a tap or a spout or something. But you know, nice piece and actually a nice cherub, rather nice cherub. So, a modern piece, not particularly for me, but, you know, I am actually getting into my modern sculpture a bit. I've got a couple of pieces at home, care of Martin Johnson, actually. 
Thank you, Martin. We rather love them. These are nice forces, and they they are actually nice. They've got Bulwell Nottingham. What else does that say? Can't quite see. It's Sankey. Oh, Sankey and Sons. They're a really good maker. Very good maker. I think they might be Victorian actually. Um, so yeah, they're very nice. Modern sculpture bench. It's got a. I think it might have a little bit of damage on the bottom. I'm not too sure. Some more modern sculpture. Rather fun cats. And now we're coming into the more serious pieces. This piece, hope I'm not making you sick by turning that round. This is actually a Dalton piece. This is stamped. And it is an incredible base, an incredible uh, pedestal with the ram's heads. And I think it probably did go together originally, i.e. the urn was made to go with the pedestal because you can see the marking of the urn where it's been on there for years. And it's got a stamp, Dalton and Co. Anything with a stamp, again, will always carry um, a premium. Obviously, this one's had quite a lot of damage, but that should never put anyone off who's really serious because there are some fantastic restorers in this country and that could be um, taken apart and restored. Lots of troughs, some good troughs. Uh, what have we got here? This is rather lovely. Um, not English, I would suggest, but one of the things that is important about statuary, and actually I'm in the sun there, is the face. The face on statuary will make or break a statue. I mean, carving is obviously anything that's, you can tell a good piece because it will be really well carved. And I'm no expert at all, but I've kind of seen a few pieces and spoken to quite a few dealers over the years. And obviously the depth of carving will denote quite often whether something is a really good quality, but the face of a statue is absolutely paramount for the simple reason it's the same as a painting. If you look at a painting, uh, a portrait painting, generally you'll buy it because you like, sorry that was a hole, you like the person's face. It's either interesting or attractive and it's no different in statuary. Um, what have we got here? It's an interesting piece. I'm not quite sure whether that's a bit more. It's got a lot of weathering, that's for sure. But the face on that, the face on that has almost disappeared. I don't know if you can see that. But fantastic weathering. I suspect that's marble. And that's lot 41. This piece here, I don't know anything about it. I haven't looked at the catalogue yet, although James has kindly um, provided me with one. But look at that colouring. If that is natural verdigris, which I suspect it is, you judge for yourself, but that is all over. It's even. And it is beautifully modelled. And just the best verdigris colour you could wish for. I mean, I love metalwork and I love iron. Um, and I love bronze for the very reason that it can, bronze can go this colour and it is just, to me, it's just the best colour in the world. I love it. I love its bits. Now there's a little statue, some interesting sinks or fountain bowls. Oh, oh no, I won't turn the camera that way. Rather grand pair of urns that are painted, but I think they're terracotta. And they're rather nice because they've got some real flowery decoration in the round and in the round means it's literally been decorated all around the piece some pieces aren't decorated in the round and they will have a flat back that has not been finished or decorated at all so that is something else to look for but very nice unusual cast iron bases um, i'm not sure whether they come together worth checking another pair of more traditional um, most of you would have seen that kind of campan campana urn. A pair of eagles, pretty regal eagles, quite like those. 
they're interesting now they're a pair of cones uh, or spires actually forgive me calling them cones um, presumably they would have been on top of a building somewhere but again they've got that very black northern colouring um, but a really grand scale so I'm 5 foot 4 I think and they're certainly taller than me ok so what else do we have we have two statues again that one definitely classical that one more modern and if you look at the face on that if you can in the sun if you look at the face you will see that the depth of casting because that's a recon piece i believe is nowhere near uh say this piece which i believe is marble so depth of casting matters huge trough huge stone trough now summer's place are geared up to move this stuff this very very heavy stuff and these kind of troughs can make real statement pieces in anyone's garden but you do need to think about getting them off the other end it can all be done you just need to make sure that you have and Summer's Place may even be able to arrange that. I'm sure they have plenty of contacts that can. <clears throat> but also you need to make sure you've got an entryway that, that it can go through. But to be honest, if you're going to buy that trough anyway, you probably have got a very big garden and plenty of entrance way anyway. Rather smart pair of benches with lion arms and great big paw feet. Beautifully weathered beautifully weathered and actually in really nice condition not quite sure whether they're recon stone or marble but they are lot 15 lot 15 contemporary table very nice stone urn and actually these single urns on pedestals can look great as a centerpiece down a walkway um, with beautiful flowers in trailing over um, especially if you kind of like a garden like this where you kind of walk around lots of corners and then you suddenly come across something in the hedge um, or in the middle of the pathway and it's really nicely decorated or filled out with flowers um, great feature so these I honestly don't I, I think these are probably granite um, not my kind of thing but uh, statement pieces for sure and you won't miss them um, and I'm sure somebody somewhere um, they are perfect for nice little statue of the three graces uh, nicely weathered some gates some horse heads they look like bronze actually probably mo modern I would say but they're they're pretty they're good bronze and that's uh, let me stand back. Can you see that? Obviously needs to be repainted and everything, but again, I'm sure someone will rather like it. That's a lovely statue. That's Venus again, I think. Um, I've actually had, uh, I've had her in a couple of times. She needs some restoration, but she's beautifully weathered. And again, a pretty face pretty face this is a nice group I'm assuming marble looks looks pretty old and it looks like very old actually it looks like that was probably a musical instrument um, lovers perhaps and he's actually got a, a really pleasant face hers is very very weathered and again you know all of this can be restored. Fantastic weathering. Birdcage. What lot number is that? That is lot 40, that one. Birdcage, French birdcage, which, you know, with even flowers in would look, would look quite a fun statement piece. And that's what I like about, you know, Summer's Place. They, they have some really fun elements. I mean, look at these. If you have a pond, 
Wouldn't you want that? They are fabulous. And they're bronze, I think. Really nicely cast. And I suspect, actually, got some good age. So they're quite fun. You could have, I mean, this is a square pond. So you could have them, one on each corner, which would be quite fun. Some wire work chairs over there. More gates. Sorry about all the jumping around. Another great big temple. My garden would be swamped by that. But, you know, this is nice. This is a marble bath. Two marble baths, actually. Both of oval form. And both, I don't know if you can see that. I think they're marble or stone. They both narrow down like the old kind of bathtubs. And I could be wrong, but I believe these may be Italian and incredibly old. And again, um, this is the sort of thing that in a country house garden, you could have made into a fountain piece. And I did this at a show once and I, it wasn't a stone or marble piece. But I had a rather fabulous bath and I put lots and lots of plants inside it and had water, recirculating water in it. And I had a lot, I, I set up a lion's mask water, water fountain as well. And it sold almost immediately the whole thing because everyone loves water in a garden. They love the sound of it. Um, tracks the birds that's rather grand that's a very nice table you can see that sitting on an Italian piece somewhere and this is the lovely James <laughs> Ryland flattery will get you absolutely <laughs> everywhere I'm just going to give Jane a collection of catalogues thank you, um, James do you have a particular, are these, oh let me ask you, sorry Yes. Are these marble? Yes, they're Rosso Verona marble. Um, Am I right? They're Italian. Well, they're they will Italian. be if they're Rosso Verona. They're, they're Italian and they came out of the country villa of Pope Julius II. Wow, who impressive. Was the patron, uh, the Pope patron, who commissioned um, Michelangelo to do the Sistine Chapel ceiling, amongst other things. Well, you don't get a lot more provenance so, than that, do you? Yeah. <laughs> but what's interesting about it is normally Rosso Verona is very pink in colour. But over the centuries, it gets more and more yellow. So, they oh, are, I didn't know that. That's yep, very interesting. No, they are probably, you know, they're probably. We think they may well be period with Pope Julius II. So we're talking early, early. So, 1500s. what sort of age would you would you say they are? So early fifteen hundreds. I mean, I think they are Renaissance. That's incredible. They were plumbed. Would have been plumbed into the into the villa, and then with the advent of modern plumbing, they'd have been taken outside. So they would have actually bathed in them. Yeah, you got go and see his and hers plot holes. <laughs> actually, that is a very good point. Yeah. For, for the man who has everything. <laughs> exactly, his and hers. <laughs> his and hers bathtubs. They're pretty impressive. Can I ask, do you know what the estimate is on those? Uh, I think we've got 12 to 18,000 on the Okay, pack. and what is yes. the lot number on those? So those are lot, is it five? Lot number five. Um, and James, can you just confirm when the auction is? Uh, so the auction, the live auction, is next Tuesday, starting at um, one o'clock. So that's um, on the 18th of May, and then we have our seal bid auction. We need all our bids with us by four o'clock on the day after, so on Wednesday the 19th. Okay. So happy bidding. Yeah. No, it's. I was just saying to people how I love this place because it's you and Rupert make it very relaxed, and there's such a choice here. There's some really fun things. I love the. Are they tortoises? Or? Yeah, they're all turtles, yes. Turtles? Yeah, Sorry about that. Uh, would have come off probably an Italian fountain. And um, they're bronze, aren't they? And they're bronze, yeah. And rare, what sort rare, of age rare. are they? Rare, rare, rare. Uh, sometimes uh, late 19th century. Oh, like that. I think, but yeah. based on, if you think about some of the early Renaissance animal sculptors, like... Um, um, and the, the figure over there, let me just pan everybody. Oh, no, you can't see it. I'll have to take them around. The figure <laughs> over there of the, of the gentleman that is covered in verdigris which is my favorite color 
and clasping his hands in oh, front yeah, of yeah. him. Well, is you, that? You point him through there. That's the one. Yes. That's the one. Yeah, what sort of age is he? He's, I think he's dated 1879. And, is he? Uh, yeah. Um, uh, beautiful third degree. Gorgeous, I, I isn't it? I appreciate that he's not the belle of the ball in terms of being pretty, but it's a pretty powerful piece it of is. work. It and is, it is. If you look at the way the undersides of his feet have been cast in the patina, yeah. it's, it's pretty good. I mean, the, the patina on that is all over as well. Yeah. It's very even. Yes, yes. I mean, I was saying earlier that um, how important um, depth of carving and on a statue, how having an attractive face yes, is, yes, yes. Well, makes he, a lot of difference. He does look as if he's got the cares of the world. Yeah, he does. <laughs> he does, bless him. But anyway, if you think you've got problems, buy him. <laughs> all over him. A problem shared with a bronze statue is a problem. <laughs> <laughs> so, question of the day. Do you have a favourite piece? Yeah, and you're going to think I'm crazy. OK, yeah, so shall we go and have a look? I'll show you that you've got to wind your way through all these. My, mine has to be the statue we were just talking about. Oh, really? Purely, some more pieces here, folks. Purely because of the verdigris colour. Yeah, I love great, bronze. It's a great colour, isn't it? Now, you're going to think, Jane, you're going to think I'm absolutely crazy. My favourite piece is actually this. That is lovely. And everybody will say, oh, God, it's just a boring old urn. But it's actually, it's not. It's 18th century uh, cistern. And it's carved in Kilkenny marble. How do you how do you spell that, James? So K I L K E N N Y. So Kilkenny, you know, town. Oh, in Kilkenny. Marble. Kilkenny marble, yes. Kilkenny. Is that Irish then? Yes. Yeah. So very rare. But the thing about it is, it's it's known. Kilkenny is known as the city of pavements um, because huh. they used Kilkenny marble on a lot of it. Uh, Not thirty-five. Quite a lot in the south. But the thing about it is, it is incredibly hard, and to, to kind of granite-like. Yeah, it's it's not quite as hard as granite, but very very hard. If I go like this, you can hear how high the ring is. Yeah. So showing how hard it is. Well, that's so, an interesting tip actually for people. So. Yes. Yeah. So if that, I go. On so this granite pair of would be urns, dull, I think, wouldn't it? That's got yeah. no ring at all. Whereas yeah. this. The other reason it gives a good ring is because the skill of the carver, where he's carved it to an incredibly thin depth, yeah. bearing in mind that it's um, very, very hard, it shatters very easily. Right. So it is actually a tour de force to have actually produced that. And whoever buys it, they have the option of actually polishing it. And if you polish it, it'll come out sort of wonderful, very rich, sort of just off black colour, but, but with um, sort of fossil inclusions and things like okay. that. Okay, and obviously that, I've been saying on a couple of pieces here that have clearly got damage, yeah. which you don't hide, but no, all this not. can be restored. Yes, all of this can be restored. There are some holes here, drainage holes, but if you look in the drainage hole, you can see how thin he's managed to carve it. You know, yeah. it's, it's really, really thin. That is a real... That is skill. real skill. Real skill. And yeah, we got a chunk out of the sockle there. So would that have been used for wine? Yeah, they, they, the kind I of think they used ice it. Yes, and wine, yeah, that yes, kind of thing. Exactly. Bearing in mind that a lot of um, Georgian houses did actually have ice houses as well. Yeah. So they would collect the ice in the winter and then store it in straw. And they literally, I think, used to literally, the ice would be, would it be at the bottom? They would pile it up the ice. Oh, yeah, and they built just... ice houses, which were half underground to keep the, for the insulation. They pack, it, pack them in straw. Um, so appreciate your fridges, people. Oh, I appreciate my gin and tonic <laughs> any day of the week. <laughs> That'll fit a few bottles of Gordon's in it. <laughs> and one of the other things I was talking about earlier to people was um, obviously some of the things like the Roman baths. So yes. they're heavy and people need to just be mindful of the fact that these kind of things need to be moved around. But you can help with that. So you can arrange oh, delivery. I mean, Jane... Um, well over 50% of the sale goes abroad. Does and, it? And, yeah, and so shipping, we spend our whole time dealing with shipping. Yeah. You know, we can give quotes. For you do it in your all sleep. All we need is a zip code and a whatever <laughs> for anywhere in the world and we can get you a quote. Okay, so just before I sign off, because people have been incredibly kind and watching for all my gibbering, um, website address. Oh, yes, that's important, isn't it? So it's www and then Summers Place Auctions, and that's for all. 
And which email should they use if they need to inquire? Uh, if you just do info, short for information, info at summersplaceauctions.com, we will get it. Great. And it's next week? And it's next Tuesday and Wednesday. Fantastic. Yeah. Thank you very much, James. No and thank you, everybody, for watching. Bye-bye. James, that's amazing. So